A politician in British Columbia is calling on his municipality to erase a racist covenant that prevents people from selling their homes to non-white buyers. It was a shocking discovery for Marcus Wong when he bought his house in West Vancouver. And as Robin Gill reports, there are other neighborhoods in Canada that until recently had the same racism when it comes to real estate. The British Properties is a posh neighborhood in West Vancouver, a suburb of Vancouver. This is where Marcus Wong grew up. Well, I certainly remember the times when, you know, going around in the community, people reminding me sort of subtly, like, you know, like, this is why the British Properties are called the British Properties. Then Wong bought a house, and there it was in writing why he felt so unwelcome. The covenant in the land title that says, no person of the African or Asiatic race or African or Asiatic descent, except servants of the occupier of the premises in residence, shall reside or be allowed to remain on the premises. The language is very striking. It's very shocking, in fact. Wong is now a councillor for West Vancouver and has introduced a motion to have this redacted even though it is technically null and void in Canada. This part of the country isn't the only neighbourhood with real estate rules that promote racial segregation. In 1920, an equally troubling covenant was enacted in the neighbourhood of Victoria Park, now part of Calgary's Stampede Grounds. Residents who lived in the Broadview and O'Connor area of Toronto weren't allowed to sell to Jews or persons of objectionable nationality. It was deemed illegal in 1945, and it wasn't until 2019 that the same anti-Semitic sentiment was removed from the books in the city of Saint-Jean, sur Richelieu, near Montreal. It was like a contract. You've actually signed something that says you can't sell to non-white, if you do, someone can actually take you to court, and the courts will find against you. Yeah, and they did. And they did. Historian Henry Yu has studied racism in real estate as far back as the beginning of colonialism in Canada. But he doesn't think these covenants should actually be erased, since they're already null and void. I would really be opposed to everybody quietly changing their legal titles and, you know, getting them updated and making it seem like that history didn't occur. Wong is steadfast in his resolve to have the covenant erased in the place where he was born, but believes it will serve as a history lesson. Really have that frank discussion of like, who do we want to be as Canadians, you know? How does this match up or doesn't match up with our values as a nation? West Vancouver Council votes on this motion in the fall, and while there may not be blatant outrage, there is certainly an uncomfortable feeling to know that this rule is still on the books. Robin Gill, Global News, West Vancouver. Even before the pandemic's financial blow, Alberta was poised to suffer its worst ever economic decline. And the largest in Canada. Now the province's money woes have been worsened by Mother Nature. The costliest hailstorm in Canadian history has left Alberta in shambles this summer. And as Jenna Freeman reports, experts chalk it up to bad luck. In June, vinyl siding stripped from homes, shattered windshields in northeast Calgary. The cost? Catastrophic. At $1.2 billion, it's the costliest hailstorm in Canadian history. Then July, in minutes, crops cut in half, more hail hammering the province of Alberta. Well, this was a field of wheat that was up to my waist. These photos were taken 24 hours apart, a storm near Innisfail leveling Dwayne Bennett's crop. Massive wind and over six inches of hail. And we've lost 14 out of 1,600 acres probably. Enter the hail suppression team, taking to the skies to try and mitigate some of the damage from Mother Nature. Implemented in 1996, the planes use technology to produce ice crystals intended to reduce the size of hail and in turn the damage caused by it. So far this summer, the team hasn't tracked the number of storms going up, but says that the damage that's being incurred is increasingly severe. Our high statistics for severe storms and operations it's increased. The conditions seem to be more severe within the last uh, 10 years. And expensive. A few decades ago, insurers were paying out, on average, $500 million a year 
that number has almost quadrupled to almost $1.9 billion a year. This year, Alberta insurers alone are expected to dole out $2 billion. According to Environment Canada, the record-setting hailstorm that hit Calgary can simply be chalked up to bad luck. Those storms usually happen just in the foothills, not over top a city. Researchers still don't know why storms are more destructive. Those details will come with additional data and analysis. But with at least half of storm season still left, it becomes an anxious game of waiting and watching. Jenna Freeman, Global News, Calgary.